You know, the other day I was having my morning coffee before I was about to log into my computer and start my work day. And Dustin was outside filling the bird feeders in our yard. And I could see the birds were sitting in the trees and the bushes watching you. Almost like they were waiting for you to leave so they could go have their breakfast. And it got me wondering, do you think that the wild birds in our neighborhood, and especially the ones that hang out around our house, recognize us? And do you think in particular they recognize you as the bird feeder guy the minute you walk out the door? Like, do they have the ability to recognize us? And remember who we are. Some of them definitely do. So birds are incredibly intelligent, but they're just wired differently. Their brains work differently than ours. They're, the way that they perceive the world or the speed at which they perceive the world is different than ours. But definitely some of them recognize me as the bird feeder guy or the guy who's in the yard you know, doing chores all summer. Some of the crows that you asked me to befriend with have started mm -hmm. to recognize me. Um, and often I wear a hat intentionally because they start to associate that as more of a visual cue. So, okay. So it sounds like you've had these anecdotal experiences that have taught you that they know who you are. But, you know, being an avid birder, have you ever like looked in to see if there's any like legitimate research kind of backing up your experiences? There definitely have been studies that show birds are able to recognize specific individuals by face, in particular the corvid family. So those are the blue jays, magpies, crows, and ravens, um, and also the friendly Canada jay. That makes sense because I know, I know the blue jays in particular sometimes will sit on the feeders and just squawk their little heads off. And at first I thought they were yelling at other birds. And then one day I happened to notice that you went outside and put some peanuts out there and they immediately shut up and got to work like eating. So they were calling for you, weren't they? And they sure were. And so uh, there's one particular study from the University of Washington that found crows can not only remember specific faces, but they can pass that information along to other crows. Oh, that's interesting. And the crows that I've been feeding to start fostering our relationship with they not only recognize me, but now they come to the wires or the trees across the street and they sort of squawk to let me know that they're there. And they're very skittish. They won't approach me, but they even see me through the window when I'm there working. Um, and they're cautious about how close they get, even though I'm inside the house because they see me through the window and they know that I'm like the guy, the peanut guy. So I feel like we've got two out of the three. Um, out of the Corvid family so far. So I just mentioned that we've got the Blue Jays that call for Dustin. We've now got crows calling for you. There are ravens that live in the conservation land on the other side of the lake. So I guess once you get those guys also coming over, you'll have the trifecta of Corvids in our area <laughs> treating you as their personal waiter every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the ravens actually, I think, do know me or at least have become acclimated to me because I go to the field where my bird boxes are a lot in uh, especially May and June. Um, and at that time, they're raising their babies and I see them a lot and they're definitely used to seeing me. And even the tree swallows that I check the nest boxes and the bluebirds, I can tell that they know that they recognize me partly just by like the calm look in their eyes when we see each other at close range. But also some of them like squawk and chirp and dive at me like the first two weeks or the first, say, six trips. And then they calm down and they don't care as much by the end of the season. And some of those tree swallows, I think, are ones that have returned from prior years because they already show that calm behavior on my first and early visits the following year. So I'm not, you know, it's anecdotal, but I'm pretty sure that they do recognize me. Okay. Um... So what, how are they, are they just recognizing you by sight? Is it just what you look like that catches their attention? Uh, for the most part, but they do also recognize auditory cues. So I, when I go out to feed the Blue Jays, I give them a little call, like kind of a, 
Tulu, Tulu kind of call, which is similar to their call, but it's very human compared to them. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be different enough that they recognize it. And there have been a few times where I don't see Blue Jays and I make that call and they come in. So that's for sure the case. Um, and I think the same is true for some of the friendlier birds around the feeder, chickadees and downy woodpeckers and things like that. Often they'll see me out to the feeder and uh, they might sort of initially retreat across the street. But while I'm feeding, they'll kind of come into the bushes and be waiting kind of just over my shoulder like they know that, that I'm the, the feeder filler. And it, it's not just that uh, auditory cue that birds know, but birds and other animals also know the auditory cues of one another. So additional studies have shown, for example, like we see blue jays at the feeder and they look really aggressive or bullyish, um, but they're actually the first ones to alarm when there's a predator around and their alarm call is recognized by other birds and by rabbits and squirrels. And studies have shown that that blue jay that alarms is actually sending that alarm all the way down the food chain and down the trail ahead of the coyote or whatever they might be alarming about. That's interesting. I never really thought before about how the noises or, or vocalizations that one species makes could ultimately be understood by another species in the wild. We actually have an example of that, though, in our own house. So we have two dogs and a cat. And when the dogs are barking because someone is passing by the house, the cat comes into the room to see what's going on. So the cat has figured out that when the dogs are making that noise, there is something going on outside of the house. Um, and I, I never just, I've just never thought that wild animals, why would they be any different in that way? Yeah, and we've actually seen that pass from generation to generation across our dogs. Yeah. So our dog, Levon, never cared really about birds. But we used to have a chocolate lab named Emma who would defend the yard from big hawks and turkey vultures and eagles and things like that. And she would bark and sort of chase them to the boundaries of the yard when they were overhead. And Levon learned that behavior from her and started joining in. And after Emma passed, we got another dog, Nama, and Levon has taught her that behavior. So now she also defends the yard from large birds that she never cared about just because she learned it from Levon. And around the same time that we got Nama, we installed a ring doorbell. So she had never heard an old-fashioned sounding doorbell of ding-dong, right? But sometimes on the TV, you hear an old-fashioned mm -hmm. doorbell, and Levon will bark at it because he remembered from the pre-ring doorbell days. Yeah. And now Nama has picked that up from him, even though she's only ever heard that doorbell on the TV. There's never actually been a real threat. So it's incredible how animals teach each other what sounds mean, even though they don't have they don't have a way of teaching like we do, like with such a sophisticated language, right? It's That's right. And animals all have different sort of hierarchies of how they perceive the world with their senses. And um, there's a great book that came out last year. Uh, we'll put it up. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but it goes through all the individual senses. It's called like An Immense World or something like that. But it goes through kind of how uh, different animals perceive the world very, very differently based off of a hierarchy of their senses. And we know dogs are kind of scent-oriented first and then sound and then visual. So oftentimes you'll be giving a dog a command and they're sort of not hearing it, mm -hmm. but you give them a hand signal and they know it right away. Um, birds are auditory first. So that story we just told about the dogs learning auditory cues is actually way less... Um, represented in dogs than it would be in birds. It's super high because they're sort of auditory first and visual and, well, they're probably visual and auditory and then scent is way down for them. I might have to check out that book. <laughs> I don't think I, I, I don't think we've talked about that one before, but all right, getting back to the topic at hand, we went down a little bit of a tangent, but that's okay. Um, so it sounds like birds really do recognize the people who are regularly feeding them. Absolutely. If you have bird feeders. Yep. And even if you don't feed them, right? If you're just out in the garden, if you're the, you know, person who routinely goes in and out the front door by their nest in the spring or something like that. Uh, but absolutely. Chickadees, titmice, cardinals, they all recognize who's coming in the feeders. Um, they might appear more frequently or just show up and be less skittish around those individuals. Um, and that consistent 
behavior, like feeding them uh, or just showing up on a schedule, really fosters that schedule and recognition and helps them to build trust over time. Sort of like the Carolina Wrens that would join me in the gazebo every evening last mm-hmm. summer. Okay. Um, is there any other like surprising research that has been discovered about how like wild birds are recognizing us? Yeah, birds are really visual. We know, for example, that if you put a scarecrow out in a cornfield, like it works for a day or two, but then before very long, they kind of figure it out because they're used to that whatever flannel pattern shirt that the scarecrow is wearing. So you have to mix it up because they start to recognize those things. Yesterday we put a camera on the feeder and that was just different. So it, it got Mm -hmm. them kind of worked up, but they do definitely recognize patterns, shapes, colors, those sorts of things. I even um, read something when we were preparing for the podcast that they even can recognize walking patterns So the way somebody walks, they will pick up on that just kind of mannerism that an individual has as well, which I think is crazy that they can be that observant. Yeah, and there's an angle of bird craft that um, kind of espouses blending into the environment by acting like you belong there. And so I'll sometimes sit down on the edge of a trail and pretend like I'm eating or foraging like a deer might. And it helps them get more acclimated because that's a behavior they recognize in the animal world that I might exhibit and they get more comfortable more quickly. And you mentioned that you wear a hat. Why do you do that? Um, Well, a number of reasons, but I'll often put my hat on just to fill the feeder so that they get used to that shape and they associate me with it all the time. Okay. So it sounds like birds are way more observant than I may have considered in the past in that, you know... For those of us who love the like wildlife that exists around us where we live, um, that wildlife really is getting to know us over time and watching our behaviors and becoming familiar with us. Yeah, it's definitely a reminder of how connected nature is to us and how connected we are to nature even when we don't realize it. So by understanding and respecting that behavior, um, it helps us to appreciate birds and their presence even more. <laughs>